We are so glad that you joined us today. God wants to do so much for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So take a moment to share your story with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org. Or you can download our church app available for iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message. All right, good morning and welcome to Lima Baptist Temple. We're glad you joined us. Let's stand together, church. Let's sing and let's worship. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless and all in wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace.
All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Lima Baptist Temple. Y'all ready to go this morning? I tell you, every Sunday when we come here together as a music team, as a pastoral team, we get so, so excited to come here to the house of God and to lift up his name and worship. And I hope you see that, that we are excited about our Savior. And it's not about us. We want to play the background. We want Jesus to come forth and be seen, that people would see the love of Christ by the way that we worship and by the way that we preach every Sunday morning. So we are excited that you're here. Um, if you are a guest, if you're visiting today, or this is your first time at LBT, we are so glad that you made us a part of your weekend. When you get a chance, fill out the connection card in front of you and bring it back to our connect desk following the service for a special gift just for you. That's something new that we're implementing. Instead of putting the connect card in the offering plate, we're going to now take that and then uh, take it back to the Connect Desk because we have a special gift for you. We'd love to get you connected with Lima Baptist Temple and how you can be involved in what God is doing here at LBT. So, all right. Let's continue to worship this morning with Here For You. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be the sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God let your fire fall down, let our shout be your anthem. Glory now, fill the sky, we are here for you, Lord, we are here for you, let your word move in power, let what's dead come to life, we are here for you. are open, nothing here is hidden, you are one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down, to you our hearts are open. This morning, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we welcome your Holy Spirit here today, Father. Move in a mighty and a powerful way. God, I pray that you convict us of our, of our sin, Lord. Bring us closer to you today. You are welcomed here, Holy Spirit. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. To you, a 
heart to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one desire you alone are holy only you are worthy god let your fire fall down to you our hearts are open nothing here Sing it. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake. Almighty be seated this morning. And Father, we come before you, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit moving in this service. And Father, we continue to pray your blessing today. Father, we come in celebration for what you've done on the cross. God, we should be the most excited people on the planet, rejoicing in what you have done, the ultimate sacrifice of giving up your son Jesus so that we could have eternal life. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. And so, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus who covers all of our sin. We thank you that no longer are we lost in darkness and death. You have brought us forth to life. We love you. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope, with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began, ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. And heart was given away. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to death. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace free washes over. Chains, I'm a prisoner. No. My shame was a ransom.
criminal's cross. And darkness rejoiced as though heaven had something to clap about and to rejoice about. Amen. That is exciting. All right, guys. Well, we're not done worshiping yet. Sorry. We're going to stand back up. We're going to keep worshiping. Amen. Come on, let's do it. This is a song we did last week. We introduced it, a brand new song called Living Hope. I think you're going to like this. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living Oh, 
could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my Lord. singing everybody great worship you may be seated this morning we're going to ask our ushers if they will to come at this time we're going to receive our Sunday morning offering and remember unlike other times don't drop your visitor card in the offering plate take it back to the desk in the lobby special gift for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that our hope is not based upon someone who is in the grave. Our hope is not based upon ritual, routine, or anything like that. But thank you, Lord, that our hope is based in one who is alive. Thank you, Lord. The Bible tells us that Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. 
Thank you for our living hope. Thank you for the time that we've had to worship you. I pray that you might bless us through the word of God this morning as Pastor Michael speaks to us. Lord, give us your blessing, and Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do in our life. But Lord, we want to thank you right now for the opportunity of giving. Lord, you've done so much for us. We pray that our offerings, our tithes today might be given from a heart that is joyful because of the sacrifice of Christ and because of the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord. Bless the offering today. We'll praise you and thank you for what it's used for in our lives and in the lives of others. We ask all these things in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. All right, this morning we were singing about Jesus conquering sin and death in our life, and now we're going to really celebrate that. Go ahead, Marvin, hit it. We're going to celebrate that Jesus brought us out, and we're going to get a little bit excited for this. All right, hit it, Marvin. Come on, choir, let's stand.
man, that is really easy to follow up. Man, I am excited to be up here this morning. This is my fifth time preaching this week, so I've been going all week, and I am ready to go even more. Um, and so real quick, I just want to pray, and uh, then we'll get into what God has for us this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just come before you, God, asking you, Lord, God, that you would soften hearts this morning. God, that as we've uh, experienced you through worship, God, as we've worshiped to you, Lord, God, I pray that each and every one of our hearts are receptive to your word, receptive to the truth that you have for us this morning. And God, I pray that each and every life in here will be impacted um, by your word this morning. I pray this in your name, Father. Amen. All right, like I said, I'm fired up. I've been speaking all week. Um, and this morning, we're going to talk about a little bit of a touchy subject to some people. So I'm going to warn you right now that it's going to be a little bit, it might step on your toes a little bit. Uh, but the good thing is if you lean in on what I'm talking about, and if you lean in on what God has for us this morning, I promise you, you're going to walk out of here with a different heart, and you're going to be changed. Because it's God's words, and his words never return void. Have you ever noticed how many things that we share in common with the Israelites? I mean, God's chosen people, the ones who are supposed to be the cream of the crop. They were supposed to do everything right in the world's eyes. But the Israelites had a problem that I think all of us can relate to. No matter where you're at, the Israelites had a problem that you and I can relate to. And that problem is selfishness and greed. They were selfish and greedy. They, they, keeping the things they liked for themselves. We tend to keep the things we like for ourselves because we think we need it. Or that we might not get more of it. Or we take too much and make someone go without. In Malachi, the Israelites were breaking God's covenant specifically by withholding tithes. Chapter 3 started in verse 7. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent, pre prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. A few months ago, back in August, um, I love going to the fair. Anybody with me? I love the fair. And uh, Rachel babysits a couple kids throughout the week. And we took these kids for an evening at the fair. And one of my favorite parts of the fair, and these kids as well, was the petting zoo. I always look forward to going to the petting zoo and seeing what do they have this year. Uh, and one of the things they had this year was an owl. And I walked into the, the, the tent, and I see this owl sitting there, and I think it's taxidermied, and then all of a sudden it moves its head. Freaks me out. Um, but we go into this petting zoo, and, and we, we take the kids in there, and they're loving it. And we take a quarter, and we put it in the little machine, and it gives you out a little grain. Um, and we're feeding the animals and whatnot. And then, okay, there's this little boy in there that goes to Kamari, one of the, the kids that Rachel watches, and he hands him a carrot. Now, these, these little things of carrots are like $5. As soon as you walk in there, they have them on the table. You can buy one. And this boy takes the carrot out of his container and hands it to Kamari. And in that moment, I was so touched. I was like, this is not normal. What kind of kid does this? It blew me away because our natural tendency is not to give. It's not to serve. It's not to put others first. We typically think of ourselves first and hold on to what we like without giving any to others. We are naturally, we are born in our DNA, we are born greedy and selfish. Just before that incident that night at the fair, 
I had given Rachel an evil look because she was trying to eat some of my fried cheese. And I, I love fried cheese. That's, that's like the highlight to the fair is the fried cheese. And I gave her an evil look. And in that moment, I was so convicted because this little boy, probably five, six years old, understood the concept of generosity more than this 26-year-old man. That's a big deal. I'm supposed to be a Christian. I'm supposed to be a pastor. And I'm giving my wife an evil look because she wants to eat my fried cheese. I'm like, it, it spoke volumes to me that this kid was willing to give one of his carrots to somebody, somebody who he had no idea who he was. They weren't the same color. They were probably from a different social economic class. No connection at all between these two besides probably their age. And this little boy gives this carrot to Kamari. And you could have seen this smile come on his face. And I, 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 was, I was tempted in that moment um, to go buy some and give it to the little boy um, because of his generosity. So what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about giving? What does it say about generosity? Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured onto your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Any men in here, take out the trash. Any men, right? Some women, right? This is what Luke is trying to talk about. Because here, when you take out the trash... If there's room in it, you don't take it out, right? You push it down, use your foot, use your elbow, whatever you got to do. You push it down so you can get more in there, right? And then when it's actually full and overflowing, then you're like, well, I better take out the trash. That's what Luke is saying. He's saying that if we will give, God will bless us even more abundantly so much that it is shaken, pressed down, and overflowing. Like I said, I had this slight feeling that I should have rewarded that little boy for his generosity by buying him another bowl of carrots. He gave Kamari one carrot, but the bowls had like 10 in each bowl. So had I gone with the feeling I had, that boy would have received a nice bonus for his generosity. But I'm not generous like God is generous with his children. I was selfish, and I didn't give in the way that I had been led to. But not all things will give us an earthly reward. Matthew 6 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. This means that sometimes we give just because we feel led that God wants us to do that. It doesn't mean we're going to get some immediate reward it just means that our heart is in the right place. We can live a generous life by storing up treasures in heaven, not on earth. Where is your treasure? Where do you store the things that you, des that you hold valuable? Is it in your wallet? Is it in your house? Is it in your barn or somewhere on earth? If you're storing up treasures here on earth, that means your heart is in the world. Scripture says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No one's ever going to see a U-Haul behind a hearse because you can't take it with you when you go. We should be storing up treasures in heaven because as believers, our heart should be in heaven. Our heart should be in the things of God. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where are you putting your treasures? Are you putting them in the world? Or are you putting them in heaven? It brings us to how can we give? What ways can I give? What are my treasures? Well, there's treasure, time, talents, and things. Treasure is just another word probably for money. That's, that, that's the big one. Money. What, what are you doing with your money? I told my students that when you get an allowance, or if you even get money handed to you from your parents to go on a date, you should be giving a portion of that to God. That's, that's what we're called to do as Christians, as believers. And if our heart is a generous heart, a heart of God, then that's what we're going to do. What are you doing with your money? Time. 
What do you do with your time? Are you spending time on other people rather than on yourself? Because we're not naturally doing that. We don't naturally, it's not our original person to spend time on other people. We have to be intentional about spending time on other people. Talents. What is the talents that God has given you? How are you using them for him? How are you using them? Um, Just this past week, Moose and I made a trip to a local neighborhood and fixed a a church member's uh, uh, bathtub drain because we have the talents. A, A few months ago, I fixed somebody's toilet. I was, I was at church doing my pastoral job, and we got a phone call. Someone needed their toilet fixed, and so I went and I fixed their toilet. Are you doing that? Are those moments coming up where you have the opportunity to use your time and use your talents, and are you giving it? Are you being generous with what God has given you? Because God has given you time. He's given you talents, not just money. It's not just money. Living a generous life is not just about money. It's about time and talents. And lastly, things. What things do you have that maybe somebody else needs and you already have it? Maybe you got a new fridge. What are you going to do with your old fridge? Maybe you, maybe you got a new a washer and dryer. What are you going to do with your old one? There's people out there that can use it. Are you living a generous life? Those are the things that you can give. Those are the ways to give your treasure, your time, your talents, and your things. But here's the part, hard part. And the hard part is we have limited resources. We have limited treasure. I don't know about y'all, but I live on a limited budget. We have limited time. I only have 24 hours in a day, people. I have limited talents. Well, that one I have a lot of, but. <laughs> I have a lot of talents. <laughs> uh, and I have limited things, right? I have limited things. I have limited resources. Matthew tells us a story in chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. It's always to get easy to give when we have an abundance. But it's more difficult to give when we are barely surviving or when it might cost us something. And I want to illustrate that for you guys just a little bit. I don't usually carry a hundred, but I made sure I had one for this illustration. Hundred dollars is easy when you have plenty. When you have plenty of resources, it's easy to give. The action of giving, hundred dollars, easy. Goes right through there. Let me see, show you again. Okay. <laughs> it goes right through there. It's easy. When we have an abundance, when we have unlimited resources, it's so much easier to give. But when you only have a little bit, it's a lot harder to give. It's a lot harder to give. But when you give anyways... And when you allow God to work and allow to take what you've given and you allow him to use it for whatever he desires, he uses it no matter what you give. Even when it's hard to give, God will still use what you've given for his glory and for our good. So what's the solution What's the solution about our giving? The solution is we have to trust God with our giving. Matthew says in chapter 6, don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father has already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously 
and he will give you everything you need. Not everything you want, everything you need. Sometimes we want a lot of things and we don't really need them. I'm guilty of that. We have to trust God and know that he's got us. He's gonna provide our needs and sometimes even more than our needs. God wants us to succeed in life because it will be a testimony to the power he has in our life. I'm not saying that if you put in $5 in the offering on Sunday, that $10 is gonna show up on your bank on Monday. It might, but it's not about that. It's about your heart. Where is your heart? Is it in the world? Is it in heaven? Let's say there's someone at your work who doesn't have any friends and who's kind of an outsider. And God has given you friendship. And you get to choose who you're going to give that friendship to. Imagine that you befriend this person, giving of your friendship and your time and maybe even your money. In turn, God blesses you with the best friend you've ever had because you were willing to give. That's the heart of God. He wants to give back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. But he can only do that if you have a giving heart, if you have a heart of generosity. I saw a video on Facebook, and I wanted to share it with you guys. It's about how someone was willing to give so much for somebody else, no matter what it might cost them. Go ahead. Getting to have Sky and her family there made everything magical. It was already perfect, but they made it magical. She, around like four months, started developing these like little spots on her body, these little like pinpoint bruises. One in a million kids get JMML a year. So it's just very, very, very rare. You're cute. So it's like, well, how does this happen to my kids? <laughs> During the time that I registered to be on the registry, I was at a super low. I was feeling like my life did not have meaning or a purpose. I didn't know what I wanted to do as far as a career. And at that point in time, I thought that that defined me. When I was walking to class, I saw a beat and match sign. And then when I saw bone marrow, I was compelled to walk up and just start asking questions. I never once thought about what I would have to undergo, any of the procedures, no fear, nothing. I was just like, yes. And it was then that I really felt like, what if this is what I'm supposed to do? I wanted them to know that I was on their team and that they could count on me. I was ecstatic that I finally got to know her name and I got to know where they were. They were in California and I was all the way in Alabama. I was like, I've also enclosed one of our wedding invitations. I know that y'all are all the way in California, but I just want you to know that you're wanted here. Like, you're that special to me, and I really love y'all. I walked 
right up to her and Sky was walking towards me. She knew who I was. I just dropped down to my knees and she hugged me and then Talia walked over and said, Scott, who is that? And she was like, hey, hey. This heart beats with yours. That is exactly how I've always felt. It meant absolutely everything to me. Here she is being a three-year-old. Being a flower girl, she's walking down the aisle, and she did great. It gave us a lot of hope for what's to come. This is Sky. Oh. She's been through everything and back ever since she's been on this earth. And so to know that she's better and to know that I got to play a small part in that and now I get to watch her grow is, it, it changed my life. She's my hero. <laughs> You're never gonna experience true fulfillment in your life until you're ready to give that life away. I'm gonna say that again. You're never gonna experience true fulfillment in your life until you're ready to give that life away. That includes the things that God has gifted us with, whether it's our treasure, our time, our talents, or our things. John 15, 13 says, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. The ultimate form of generosity was shown 2018 years ago on a cross. You and I were just like Sky. We were dead without a hope of a future. But just like Hayden went through the pain and the struggle of having bone marrow removed to save Sky's life, Jesus came and experienced an excruciating torture and death for you and I so that we might have life, but not just have life, but to live a life to the fullest measure. And what fuller way is there to live than to give everything you have to the cause of God and the mission of the gospel? Maybe this morning you're ready to give a part of something that you haven't given to God yet, or to give a part of yourself to him for the first time. Maybe you wanna know more about what this Jesus guy did for you because he loved you. Whatever God has put on your heart, I'm gonna ask you to stand and come and do business with him this morning. glad that you joined us today. God wants to do so much for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So take a moment to share your story with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org, or you can download our church app available for iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message.